right, this one's on slinging technique. Now, I've been slinging for a fair few years now, and I've worked out techniques that work, and I've seen videos of um, uh, reasonably expert slingers slinging, and what, I be, uh, what I'm doing does seem to accord with what they're doing. Um, there isn't one technique that works, however. There are, there are several, and you, know, you, should, you should experiment. All slings are pretty much the same in that they have a fixed end and a free end. The fixed end has usually got a loop in it, but not necessarily, um, and uh, the, the free end has usually got something to hang on to, a knot works fine. It doesn't have to be anything like as big as this knot. A tiny knot is quite adequate. Um, where you fix the fixed end uh, seems to vary by what culture you're from, personal preference and so forth. There are reliefs um, of Assyrians uh, where they've fixed it round the, the middle of their hand like that. I've seen uh, stuff fixed to the wrist, but very often it's just one finger and um, some ancient sources have it as uh, that finger. Personally, uh, I, I've seen video of modern people using that finger. For me, that one, the ring finger, uh, just feels right, feels the most comfortable. So you've got a fixed end and you've got a free end which you just hold, simply thumb and forefinger, doesn't require much strength there. Okay, then you stick your stone in there, and uh, you might think that a stone, let's take a stone, you might think that a stone uh, with these, uh, these split things, you see if I open up the split I can pass the stone straight through it, but uh, if the stone is just placed correctly um, it doesn't fall out, you can, you, know, you can put massive amount of strain on it, and it, it, uh, the more you push the more I'm pushing, the more it's gripping into the sling. That's not actually going to force its way through the hole. So just a, a sing, uh, just two split braids like this will hold uh, a stone of very variable size. And because it is just two tiny little uh, bits of string holding the, uh, the, the, the stone, there's very little friction on the release, much less friction than with a, with a cup. I have seen slings with three um, of split braids. Uh, I've never used one, but uh, they exist, so presumably they work. Um, Right, so you stick your stone in, and uh, now with this short sling, I just hold it, hang it uh, behind me like this, and then I throw my body into it. Like, you can take a run up, of course, uh, but um, standing stationary uh, works perfectly well. Now then, there's the sidearm school, there's the overarm school, and they're the two main uh, competing schools of thought. I'm definitely overall in favour of the overarm, although, actually, when I'm going for range and power, what I use isn't quite overarm, it's not directly over my head like that. It's more like you would throw a javelin, it's sort of, um, sort of a more of a diagonal stroke over army type technique. Um, and uh, for me, I'm, I'm surprised when people ask me what, when is the right time to release, because for me it just feels completely obvious. Um, there, you can feel the stone start to start to pull forwards and the instant I do I just let, let it go um, and it, I don't know, it, 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 just try it and you'll find that just like if you're holding a stone in your hand and you do that, when do you let the stone go? Well, it, when, it, when it's right to let the stone go, I don't know, when, you let, when it feels right let this go and um, it'll work fine. Uh, sidearm technique Sidearm technique um, means that if the stone leaves horribly early or horribly late, it could go sideways and be a danger to your friends. Uh, whereas with the overarm technique, that never happens. If it leaves the sling early, it'll go wee very high up in the air. This has happened to me uh, when I've been using uh, stones from a riverbank that are really slimy with algae and mud and so forth. Uh, but there's always, always some forward momentum on it, so it may land just plunk in front of you, but it never goes behind you. And similarly, if it leaves the sling late, it'll go crashing into the ground in front of you, but at least the people, your friends, behind you are safe. So um, that's one reason for preferring the overarm technique. Um, I find it a bit more accurate. The, when I'm slinging, say I, I'm slinging with a sling moving in this plane, then I'm pretty accurate in that plane. Um, but the, the stone may leave slightly early and go high, or slightly late and go low. If I'm slinging sideways, then for, for windage I'm inaccurate, but for height more accurate. So possibly if there's a massive army charging you at close range and you just want to hit somebody, uh, then you might you, you, uh, do a sidearm uh, sling at them. But normally I would have thought you'd go overarm. 
it uses up less space on the battlefield as well. Um, and I feel I've got more control and more power over on. So there you go, there's me. Now with the long sling, um, I suppose there are two principal uh, competing techniques. One of them is to get it whirling round and round and round before you sling. And then um, you don't, incidentally, you don't do this. You don't build up speed with it. Um, if I put a stone in this, um, I could whirl it round, because of the weight of the stone, I could whirl it round extremely fast. And then I would be incapable of releasing it with any accuracy. When I, when I let go of it, it could go anywhere. Uh, that's no good. No, you only actually swirl it round to get the weight of the stone and um, uh, sort of steady yourself and to keep the stone off the ground. And then when the time comes, when the one that's going to be the sling, then you uh, put the, just hit the door. Um, that's when you suddenly put in the acceleration on the last one. Uh, you don't because then what do you do? Because it's whirling around so fast that it's, it's faster than you can actually make a big uh, sweeping gesture with your arm. Um, with, to. I'm not sure what preposition I need there. Um, so no, you don't build up speed. You just uh, keep it off the ground and um, get into position for the, the big push. Um, so there you go, that's probably enough on slinging technique for the moment. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry, I got a bit sidetracked and off the point. And I neglected to mention the other of the, the two long sling techniques that I promised. Uh, now the other one is a double-handed technique, um, where you hold the, the stone in your off hand, and uh, you hold it in some position or, or other, and swing it, throw it into an arc from that position, and then uh, make a sling, all in one movement. Uh, there are several positions. Uh, one uh, is to hold it here, so you're holding it high off the deck, and you throw it round and then sling. Uh, another one is above the head up here, round, sling, and so forth. Um, I've tried these, and to be honest, I didn't really get on with them. Um, I found them. I found this this technique, the double-handed one, to be something of a, a, an awkward compromise, an unsatisfying compromise between the the power, precision, um, and uh, simple quickness of the the short sling technique, and the big swooping round, smooth, really oomphy, gives you loads of range um, long sling technique. This one is. I I found neither one thing nor the other, but uh, other people use it, and and. I'm sure would report differently.